This is Wickham Sound. Hi guys and welcome to The Art Show on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. I am your host Dane Cobain. I'll be with you with the next hour or so where we have a different guest each week on the show. We've got a bunch of local music including some new submissions that people have sent in. You can also send me uh, some music yourself or also uh, poetry etc. Anything mp3 based basically. You can email me here on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk That's d-a-n-e dot c-o-b-a-i-n at wickhamsound.org.uk And uh, yeah, as as I said, I particularly want to hear from people who have um, stuff that they might want us to play on the show. People who've got events on in the local area, creatives, all of that good stuff. If you do cool things, I would like to hear from you. We also have a Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound. We should come up. And uh, yeah, if you miss a show, you can also listen sort of on a catch up basis on Spotify, iTunes and uh, YouTube as well. All right, so before we get too stuck into the show, this is the bit where I talk about any news that I might have. And one of those is uh, via Slady. We've played a few of their tunes on the show before. Slady, you're an all-female Slade tribute band, and uh, they performed a gig on Halloween, uh, 31st of October 2020, at the Water Rats in London. Uh, And they've posted on their YouTube. It's got some images and stuff from it. And then the audio of this show, it's about an hour and 20 minutes long, audio by Matt Court. And uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend giving it a Google. If you just go on YouTube and search The Slady Halloween Show 2020, you'll be able to find it. And uh, it's just like being able to go to real gigs. And then the other news is that we have a t-shirt comp- uh, campaign running via Wickham Art Centre. So this is literally running until Friday, so you need to get your orders in soon. It's a limited edition run. Six t-shirts designed by local artists. So we have uh, Miss Swoodle. We have um, Kat Gasker of, uh, I think it's called My Colourful Life. We have uh, Decreate. We have Decarta. We have a Calculator. L127 as well. Uh, and so we work with these local artists to get these t-shirts designed. Uh, they're available through a company called uh, Print Social. And basically Print Social are going to be donating part of their production costs to Mental Health UK. Uh, and then the proceeds from the sales go to Wickham Art Centre, which is a registered charity. And we'll also be donating 10% of those to Wickham Food Hug. Uh, Food Hub, sorry. <laughs> Food Hug too. Uh, the t-shirts are £20 plus postage. And as I say, they're only available until uh, midnight on Thursday. So order before Friday to uh, be sure to get your, your t-shirt. And that'll mean that they'll arrive in time for Christmas as well. So I'm going to play a little bit of music and then we're going to dive on in and start chatting to this week's guest who is Gray J. Hall. He's a poet, the author of The Sound of Revolution, and he's going to do some poems for us as well. But first off, let's check out some music. Now, as I said, I encourage people to email me. So if you're a musician or in a band, please do send me mp3s to dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk. And uh, I also put a shout out in some of the Facebook groups that I'm in a, m- a member of recently as well. So we've got a whole bunch of, uh, of new music to check out today. So this is Hold On To Me by Alice Jane. And I believe this is from an EP called Full Of Promise. My heart strings pull, it starts to snap 
Love music. Love talk. Love Wickham Sound. Being a foster carer isn't just about providing vulnerable children a safe home. It's about loving, listening and guiding. It's about changing their lives. If there's space in your home and you have the time and patience, then Nexus Fostering wants to hear from you. We're your local fostering agency, rated outstanding by Ofsted, and we're here to support you in supporting them with full training and a competitive allowance. For a career that really makes a difference, visit nexusfostering.co.uk or call 0800 389-0143 Hi, it's Pippa here. Join me every morning at 7 o'clock for the Wickham Sound Breakfast Show featuring all your usual favourites including Carefree Karaoke The Breakfast Banger Chikatita's Choice and in an effort to keep your morning routine as normal as possible We'll be taking the register at 8.45. I'll name check all the people that have been in touch with me every morning. So why not tweet me, send me a message on Facebook or email studio at wickhamsound.org.uk. Don't be late now and no skulking behind the bike sheds. That's the Wickham Sound Breakfast Show every weekday morning from 7. This is Wickham Sound.
That was Two Weeks by Caitlin McAvoy. Before that, we had Hold On To Me by Alice Jane. My name's Dane Cobain. You're listening to The Art Show on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. And we're joined by this week's guest, who is Gray J. Wall, who is a poet and the author of a book called The Sound of Revolution. So the first question is, what was the last book that you read and what did you think about it? Oh, OK. Um, well, I'll tell you the, the book that I'm kind of halfway through at the minute, which is mm-hmm. I'm reading The Dharma Bums. Um, OK. Which is, uh, uh, so obviously Jack, Jack Kerouac, um, and it's one of those books, I'm not sure why I've, I haven't read it before, because I've, I've read, I think I've read both Kerouac, mm. uh, and I, I, On the Road was, a, it was obviously a, a sort of huge influence when I was uh, a teenager. Um, and then I've also loved Kerouac's poems as well. But, um, but for some reason, I never got around to reading Dharma Bums, and we, we were away in Cornwall, um, uh, just a few weeks ago and saw, and saw a beautiful copy in a shop window um, my wife kindly bought it for me and so I'm about probably two thirds of the way through Dharma Bums at the moment and I, and I adore it I absolutely adore it it's um, it, 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 it's one of those things that although it's in some ways it's very much of its time um, the, the, the characters are, and uh, the the, uh, the, uh, the <laughs> but, um, uh, I think it's just the yeah what 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 he's what he's saying it's it's the um, uh, it, it, it's something for me that the that I've kind of I've dabbled in the, in the, in Buddhist readings mm. definitely and it's that it's that sort of uh, um, a, a Westerner who's not grown up with with uh, Buddhist teachings who starts to uh, discover these things and and, um, and finds way of use, ways of using them without wholeheartedly buying into to everything that Buddhist, Buddhism has to offer and, and so um, that sense of it is something that really resonates with me because it's somewhere I've been um, also just that sort of um, it's the dropping out which is which is something mm. obviously that's, that's sort of part of Kerouac in general but uh, just that idea of of, of um of uh, t- turning your back on on the uh, the sort of uh, the expectations of, of of the world where wherever that may be, um, and uh, and and the sort of lack of use of uh, of of corporate America and, and and comparing that to where we are today mm-hmm. with the, the the lack of the use and the and the, f- the failure of, of our of our current. Um, uh, corporate and capitalist mm. systems around the world um, it's all it's all in there really so yeah like, like I say whilst it's something very much of its time and it's about young men in a particular part of America at a particular time pretty much everything that he, that he, that he writes about in there is, is something that, that resonates with, with where we are mm. right now and written of course in a, in a beauteous fashion as Kerouac always does uh, I love the tempo of it um, I love the, the poetry of it the rhythm of it um, yeah it's uh, <laughs> it, it's it's funny because because um, I've read that and I couldn't remember it until you started talking about it purely right. because because um, I've read because I've read quite a lot of Kerouac as well and mm. um, in some ways they're they're all kind of they all kind of blur together for me because obviously he's just he's just writing about his life, you know. Um, I think yes. one, one of my favourites of his was Big Sir, and again, it was because of yeah, yeah. His, his kind of living that secret dream that a lot of people have of like, you know, just getting away from everything and living away from people just on the side of a mountain, like just with yeah. yourself for company, you know. <laughs> No, yeah, absolutely, and you, you're right. It's that thing that because you meet all these different characters mm. in all the different books, and it's easy to forget kind of wh- who it was that said what yeah, yeah. in what book. Because um, there's so many that have those those great sort of little one-liners that have just from a hobo he meets yeah, somewhere yeah. or someone he meets in a jazz bar or or whatever. Um, but there's some great, I, I, and I think that's one of the things. I think, Particularly with the Dharma bombs, just the fact that there's, there's some of those little uh, people. People sort of seem to be wherever he goes. Yeah. Someone gives him a little Buddhist 
quotes. Yeah. Everyone seems to have found their own little Buddhist quote. And there's the the one which sort of resonates very much with the book is is um, um, when when you reach the top of the mountain, keep on climbing. Yeah. Which is it's just one of those lines that you just yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, that's just brilliant, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And, and, and also, funny enough, I, de- I, I haven't done it for years, but I used to climb mountains right, when, yeah. I, when I was um, kind of in my late late teens, early twenties. So we we would go, we would go, and and we would be those kind of the the, the but we didn't have expensive equipment, so we, we would go, we could we rock up to a mountain. We'd always take alcohol with us. Yeah. And, uh, and, and at that time, I was smoking as well. And and but we we sort of kind of we'd pass these guys who'd, who'd gone out and spent thousands of pounds on their gear, and we'd just be sort of trolling up in in our um, sort of baseball boots with a, with a with a hip flask of whiskey. <laughs> that was that was the way we did it. So again, that 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 sort of took me back to those times as well, which is really nice. So uh, how long have you been writing for, and like how did you get your start? Well, kind of, kind of forever. I, um, I literally, uh, I think the first thing, um, it, 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 I, so I'll, I'll, I'll start with how I started, mm-hmm. which was, which was, it, it was, it was poetry, and it, I was inspired and influenced by my mum. My mum was a published poet, and um, what she would do is she, she, she actually she wrote all kinds of poems, but the poems that I knew of from her as a kid were the ones she wrote into our local newspaper mm-hmm. and she'd quite often uh, write in and, and these would be published on the letters page um, and what what it was was when she saw an, a, an issue um, or a particular character or, or someone being maligned within the local paper that she felt was unfair or, or perhaps her situation mm-hmm. had been misrepresented she would write a poem about it um, which would which would be a really nice way of kind of a, a addressing uh, a, and and offering a perspective perhaps for for others to be able to um, see that person's uh, situation through through a through a, through, a, through a pair of eyes that that was perhaps more palatable than just if you'd written in a, a you know a letter that was like a Mr Angry of Lancaster mm. letter. Um, and and I just saw so from an incredibly early age I saw the the, 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 the power of poetry and, and art in 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 a in a wider way um, to be able to to uh, uh, sort of hold that mirror up to society and allow people to to take a little look back at themselves mm. and, and and question ask those questions of themselves so that that was my starting point and and literally so I think it was about age. Probably six or seven uh, for at my primary school Christmas <laughs> show, I wrote a poem. And that was that was the first the first poem I remember writing, and um, I don't remember it <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> thankfully because <laughs> I'm sure it was awful. But but I wrote a little poem and, and stood up and performed that uh, at, at my school Christmas show, and it, and so it was that thing that. that because my mum was writing, I loved I loved that. I, I would carry around a notebook and jot down and, and write poems. I think the first poem I remember feeling sort of relatively proud of and that I think got sort of shared and, um, was one I wrote uh, probably when I was about 12 or 13, mm. which was um, also Christmas associated actually, which is, I had a paper <laughs> round and and there was a, there was a, a woman on my paper round that. Uh, was very much a, a, a loner and like local kids um, would sort of uh, ask questions of her like you know do you think she's a witch stuff like this <laughs> and and, I, and because I had the paper around I would I would see her and, and speak just a few words to mm. her and she was always a, just a very kind rather sad feeling um, and, and I think probably quite lonely mm. uh, old lady and 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 I just and I thought it, it's like people have got the wrong impression of this of this woman. So I wrote a poem about that, which was very much as, as I say, sort of uh, similar to the, to the way my mum mm. um, wrote. Uh, and yeah, that that was probably the first poem that was any good. <laughs> well, I, I think there, there's like uh, I quite like that the idea of it's almost the artist's job to kind of provide a voice for the voiceless and to stand up for those in society yeah, who are absolutely yeah mm. yeah 
And is that something that sort of still carries through to your poetry today? I think it does, yeah, to- totally, um, in, in different ways. Um, but, um, uh, I mean, I, I, mean I, I wrote a poem, for instance. I, you know, I think, for instance, with um, uh, getting involved in, in activism, I, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I go, go along to uh, Extinction Rebellion um, protests and marches yeah. quite a lot, stuff like that, and... Um, and, and you sort of see in the press the way that, that those movements are, are, mal- are maligned and, and painted out as being quite scary things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the idea that if you, if you get involved and go along to things, things like that, then there's probably going to be violence and trouble or you'll get pulled into some radical Marxist organisation yeah. or whatever. And, and it's all rubbish, really. Sorry, I almost used another word there. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> someone else um, in the same city it's, with... it's such a nonsense you know yeah. so yeah my name's Dane Cobain, you're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound. I'm here in conversation with poet Grey J. Hall and uh, this is Altered Mindset with Same Street.
That was Same Street by Altered Mindset. My name's Dane Cobain. This is The Art Show on Wickham Sound 106.6 FM. And we're currently in conversation with poet Gray J. Wall. Uh, I, don't know if it, I don't know if it still is, but, but I, I love that tradition of, the, of magazines like Rolling Stone, mm. where, who, who, where basically they, they allow um, the publication to, you know, they'll have guest writers, and, and they have that mm. wonderful history of people uh, um, like, like Bukowski or Kerouac or, or uh, yeah. you know, a, 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 a plethora of wonderful authors that have written for them. Strangely enough, the other one I think that, that used to do it, I, uh, which I'm sure doesn't anymore, I think used to be Playboy yeah. magazine used to, used to do the same thing, had this sort of great history of, although obviously they had staff writers, they would also just invite the... Um, uh, some of the great minds, some of the great yeah. authors and poets of the time, to to come and do guest articles on particular issues, and um, I think we, I think we, I, we've sort of lost some of that somewhere. I don't know mm. where that is anymore, other than, than perhaps you know there probably are places yeah. online where that happens, but I don't think to the same extent. No, I think you're right. Um, it's it's funny because um, not too long ago, actually, I read a Roald Dahl book, which was uh, so not everyone realizes as well as doing children's stuff. He did, uh, he did adult stuff as well. And uh, right. so this was a, a Roald Dahl collection of four short stories, and they'd, all four of them were first published in Playboy. Um, right. So I've been yeah. kind of thinking about that recently. Because you're right, like... Um, and even if you think back to things like Dickens, like Dickens' work was serialised in newspapers half the time and stuff, and yeah. We, yeah. Just, we just don't get that anymore, and it's, it's yeah. a shame. Yeah, no, it's sad. It, it's a real shame. And, uh, and unfortunately, the sort of, you know, although... I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are great places yeah. online. It's such a, a sort of huge thing to navigate, isn't it? To sort yeah. of try and find the quality that lies within, yeah. <laughs> within something like, like the, on, the online world. It, it, it makes it a bit tougher. And I guess speaking of the online world, like, um, what do you think a poet needs to be successful in today's sort of online digital first world? That's a really interesting one. I don't. I don't know. I mean. I mean. It's um, uh, for me a, hu- a huge part of why I, why I write and why I perform mm. is is a, is about that that sense of connection, getting that feedback, whether yeah. that be face to face or 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 from uh, or from putting something out and getting that response, um, and so you know. That, for me, I kind of it, if if I can use the online world to uh, to to back up the the opportunities that I get to be able to do that stuff face to face, or or even to, you know doing sort of um, uh, video gigs or or, or or live online gigs, then mm-hmm. I think that's that's cool. Um, but it, it it is it's a tough. As I say, I think it's just it's about finding the uh, you know you, I mean there's so many ways you can do it out there but it's finding the ways that, that are g- genuinely going to connect mm. with an interested audience i think um uh I, I mean i've got i've got to admit the i've i've, I've read a lot about how powerful the uh the in- instagram has been mm. with the insta poets uh movement it's not something that i've really I- indulged in so i um uh, but I, you know i've heard that works really well um but for me, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I set up this little group called the the Poetry Underground, uh, which is a Facebook page. Um, we, partially because at, at that time, which was probably about ten years ago now, I was looking and, and I, I was finding it quite difficult to find um, pages uh, or, or, or platforms where where people could post that had um, uh, a. A sort of uh, just a, a genuine, a, a, almost like a sort of um, a, an, an open mic sensibility about it. Um, so, so it was a very welcoming page. Whether you were someone who who was really quite new to writing poetry, or, or to, uh, you know, a, 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 a sort of an old an old hand yeah. at it, you'd feel equally comfortable to post and. Um, and it was a community first and foremost of poets, but it was also very welcoming to to audience that just wanted to come in and, and participate and comment. Um, so just yeah, like so it's like a little poetry club online. Mm. That was that 
and, and at that time, I think there are more now, and I've, I've found others myself and sort of got involved with them, but at the time I was finding it quite tough to find just a simple page online yeah. that had those kind of sensibilities. So, as I say, we li I literally sort of just set one up, which is um, which has been really nice, and, and, and uh, we've got quite a nice little sort of community that regularly contributes there now. Um, but, but I loved I loved I loved doing YouTube stuff I, I, uh, as well. I think that that can, that can be great. Um, I, you know, my my thing I've, I've got a very simple little. Um, uh, editing package on my computer so if I if I do stuff like that I mean I've done I mean just this year I've done a few live gigs for, mm. for online festivals and what what I like to do there is at least do a, spend a little bit of time on making sure it it does look quite sort of palatable you yeah. know um, I think I think there's a it, it's it's great that every phone has a camera but it, 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 uh, it can look a bit naff. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> if I could be sort of frank and honest about it. Um, so I think it's if you're going to post online, if you're going to put stuff up on YouTube, or or if you're going to submit, um, uh, you know, gigs, or uh, then then um, yeah, just 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 spend a, a little yeah. bit of time to, to sort of making sure that it looks half decent. Um, and that's fair because the, the same you know if you were going to do readings at an event or something you'd prepare in advance and you know you'd make sure you dressed up nicely for the event and <laughs> like yeah no, absolutely you wouldn't absolutely. just sort of ro roll up on the day mm. yeah yeah no that's right but yeah you know it, it, it's out there and it's great and it's, <laughs> it's it's been one of the funny things this year because because obviously we've you know there, there's all all the huge negatives that have locked down which have been terrible and I've, I've so missed get, getting out there and, and and being in front of audiences, and, um, especially because I, I, I normally go go away onto the continent once or twice mm. a year, and that side of it I've huge, hugely missed. Um, but but being able to so so I had an invitation from a, a Paris um, uh, poetry club to do a little set for them, and that was that just felt great to be able to do that, and mm. and knowing. Even though I, I couldn't look into the whites of their eyes, yeah. at least just knowing that I was that I was being able to, to connect with audiences um, some somewhere beyond my hometown yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for that short while was great. So that's been really nice. Cool. And uh, just one last question to end on, which is, uh, what have you got? Well, it's two technically. <laughs> what have you got coming up next, and where can people find out more about you? Okay. Um, so, well, I suppose the, the, the biggest thing to mention is I have a I have a new book mm -hmm. uh, coming out, which uh, which I'm I'm very pleased with, very excited about. That's coming out on December the the seventh. Mm -hmm. It's being released, and um, that is available physically at uh, I've got a website which is www dot so g r a e j w a l l dot com. Um, you can go there physically, and it, that it, that will also be available as as, as an ebook on, mm -hmm. on all those sort of uh, all the platforms. So I've, I've I've gone that that route as well because I know I know that is something that a lot of people yeah. uh, that's how they they like to engage. Um, so um, so yes, you can either buy the, the the actual book, which is the thing that I would would do. Mm, me too. <laughs> or, or <laughs> if if ebooks are, are your thing, it will be available in that form. So, so that's the main thing. Um, there's, there's always recordings, both both of poetry and, and the music side of what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I've been I, I've recorded a, a lockdown, an album in lockdown, which I my, fortunately a few years ago my wife and her, and her dad built this little uh, summer house at the bottom mm. of our garden. And so when we went into lockdown in uh, in March, I basically. Um, uh, sort of ca set up camp in there yeah. with my little MP3 recorder and a microphone and a mini amp and, and recorded a, uh, a, a kind of lo-fi mini album of, of poems and, and songs mm. um, which I released on through my our Bandcamp channel uh, which is again if you, if you go to Bandcamp and, and look for Grey J Wall uh, you'll find that there So, and I think there'll be more of that I'm going to do a little EP which will be two poems, two songs um, I've kind of got that in my head at the minute, so I think that'll that'll be something I'll do before the end of the year. Cool. Um, but yeah, just c c come to the Poetry Underground on Facebook. Um, 
come find me on on YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and all those places. And, and as I say, we ha- we ha- I have been doing you know when we've got the opportunity, we've I've done a, a few um, little uh, sort of either live streamed or pre-recorded mm-hmm. bits and pieces. So managing to to get bits and pieces out. There. So come and find me on any of those platforms, and uh, uh, be lo- be lovely to see you and chat to you. Perfect. And um, just before you go, if you have, do you, have you got a couple of poems you want to read? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's one of and it's, it's always one of those. So, so, well, yeah, not always, but some, sometimes you get that feeling like I just I don't know which ones to go. Yeah. With, but I, so it's, it, it, I, I'm going to take that last minute call uh, right now, <laughs> and I will do. It, yeah. So I'm going to do this one for you first, which is thing called the bomb. Um, this is this is one of the ones actually that I did record for the. Uh, the band camp album earlier in the year uh, and it goes like this if I don't turn on the TV will the ugliness cease to exist pregnant woman stoned to death grieving parents left bereft 200 school children spirited away the shrapnel shards penetrate and pervade each waking day every day the pontiff surveys the holy war and genuflex if you tolerate this then your children will shop at next If I had the know-how to make a single thing, a bomb it would be of love and peace and understanding, to drop within this tortured planet's heart, so when I awoke a joyous new day could start. But making such a thing would surely be too hard. And then I'm no inventor, just a lowly bard. But if you seek a hope within my words, then I can offer some. Wake up tomorrow, dearest friend, and simply be that bomb. There you Mm -hmm. go, that's the bomb. Um, And then I'll I'll do one more for you. Cool. Um, this is yeah I'll do this one so this, this is called 1982 uh, so uh, this this will resonate more with people of a certain <laughs> age but for those not of that age perhaps it'll, perhaps it'll give you a little inkling into <laughs> to something about that so 1982 at, we, at which point I would say I, would, I was age 20 uh, 1982 goes like this I kind of miss those days Paris discotheques and cigarettes inch coloured vinyl fix just riding the crest of a brave new wave suburban cavaliers on a mission to shock and thrill in equal measure a belted army raincoat with a slouch hat gentlemen's polaroids and cool menthol dogs on street corners slick and sly whistling through the graveyard on a hot summer night all doo-wop eyes and cheap perfume a manifesto hewn from hours of pouring over insert words rebellion brewing in garden cities graffiti on your gated walls scaring the commuters as we fall off the milk train sleep by day and prowl by night the revolution is coming in an old post office van to a town near you get on board clear the way the blank generation are here to stay you're listening to the art show on 106.6 fm wickham sound i'm your host dan cabane i've just been in conversation with poet gray j wall and this is bitterroot with their version of all along the watchtower
Love music, love talk, love Wickham Sound. We understand that everyday life is going to become challenging over the next few weeks and months, but we want to reassure you that the Wickham Sound team are here to inspire and entertain you with local, relevant programmes and information. We followed government advice and set our team up to work remotely. We have taken all the steps we can to keep our team safe so we can be here for you. Local businesses. Perhaps you have closed temporarily or have found a new and innovative way of working. If you want to reach customers with your message, get in touch with us today. We can get through this if we all pull together. Please stay at home, stay tuned to Wickham Sound for the latest information and do get in touch with us to let us know how you're doing, if you'd like a song played or just want us to say hello to you. Join me, Keith Bowden, every Friday night at 11 o'clock for all the best party songs around. There's rock and roll, Motown, featured artists and much more. Everything for your party. That's the Keith Bowden Party Show, 11 o'clock through till 1, Friday night, right here on Wickham Sound 106.6. This is Wickham Sound. That was All Along the Watchtower by Bitterroot. I can't actually remember if I've seen Bitterroot play live, but uh, they play at the Bellevue a fair few times, so I've either seen them or I've seen their poster up on the wall because I recognise the name. My name is Dane Cobain. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound. And we've reached that part of the show where we share a few recommendations to keep you going entertainment-wise throughout the week. So uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to jump straight over to my good buddy Twanglin Jack Ford over in the Elk Shed for this week's album review. There seems to be so much singing going on these days with very little evidence of any songs. On the other hand, there is This Town Gets Into Your Dreams by Jazz DeLorean. I've seen Jazz DeLorean many times performing with his band Tankers the Henge. I've stood in happy dancing crowds and watched him leap onto a piano while it erupted in plumes of smoke. They play irresistible party music with riffing horns and sing-along choruses. Imagine if madness had come not from Camden, but New Orleans. Every gig is Mardi Gras, and Mercredi Gras, Jeudi, Vendredi, Samedi, Dimanche and Lundi Gras. I've also stared into the Bellevue from the window to get a better view of his playing and because the pub was rammed to the rafters. Earlier this year, before the world turned sour, he played a solo show in the cafe space at the Art Centre to a largely seated audience. The songs were a revelation. They are real songs, they have interesting lyrics. They change course and key and keep you gripped with surprise turns that often hint at the great American songbook. There are moving moments of regret and unrequited love and there are joyous life-affirming up-tempo numbers. On the album, the piano playing is masterful and you have to remind yourself it's just him playing and singing at the same time. It has the rolling New Orleans rhythm and blues piano of Dr John with the bouncy cockney knees-up boogie of Jules Holland or Chaz Hodges. Every space is filled, embellished with thrilling trills and flourishes and turnarounds you won't normally hear around here. The beat is steady but varied, with the occasional heart-fluttering touch of rubato. On one song it has the grandeur of a big Elton John ballad, and at other times it's a bit Tom Waits. If some of these songs were Tom Waits songs, they would be amongst the standout tracks on any of his albums. On top of that he has the most fantastic hats. Check him out on Bandcamp, and I'm sure Matt and Claire will be promoting more Jazz DeLorean or Tankers of the Henge gigs as soon as they can. Thank you very much, Twangling Jack Ford. So we're going to go to this week's uh, film slash TV show recommendation. And I'm going to go for an oldie but a goodie. Uh, this is Spinal Tap. It's a mockumentary. So uh, it basically takes the form of a fly on the wall documentary, except it's not serious. It sort of parodies the genre. It follows a band called Spinal Tap, who are like a very over the top rock and roll band. And they kind of started out in the 60s and had their uh, like some success there and then go on to become like very almost like hair metal. And uh, we just follow the band from like their rise and fall, I suppose. A very fun movie. Lots of little catchphrases in it. It's where you get the uh, the phrase "turn it up to 11, Like these amps go up to eleven, and uh, various other little jokes from. But they also actually have some pretty good music as well. I'm expecting Twanglin' Jack Ford to uh, review a Spinal Tap album for the show any day now. 
And for this week's book, I'm going to go with I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. So um, this book's been out for a couple of years now. Uh, sadly, the author passed away and it's about like her search for the Golden State Killer. And what's really insane is that in part due to the success of the book, the Golden State Killer has now been apprehended. Uh, and she unfortunately didn't didn't live to see it. Also, her husband is uh, Patton Oswald, the sort of American, I guess, like TV star slash presenter. Uh, and he writes bits in it throughout, um, what's her name, Gillian Flynn, who did Gone Girl. She's got um, an introduction to it. And some of the sections, it's like explained, are either written based on her notes or like patched together from different blog posts and stuff. Um, I've heard people say that it feels incomplete, but I don't think it does. I actually think it stands out like just by itself as a really well done book. Um, I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I have been enjoying. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's very dark and you're reading these true horrific stories of people being you know assaulted and killed in their own homes but um if you can get past that it's worth reading i've been reading it right before i go to bed which probably isn't the best idea maybe that's why i keep having bad anxiety at night who knows but yeah i'll be gone in the dark by michelle mcnamara would definitely recommend it so that brings us pretty much to the end of this week's installment of the art show so thanks as always for listening thank you to my guest gray j wall for coming on the show thank you to twangling jack ford over in the ilk shed for this week's album review thank you to everyone whose music we played and everyone who's been in touch as well now i want to share with you um just one last uh one last track that somebody emailed in so i got this email uh, from steve he said hi dane steve here from steve winch and the inception we saw your facebook post and thought we'd send over three tracks for you to check out I'm the frontman and songwriter for the band and we are driven by punk attitude and mod fashion, creating high octane, retro fueled original music that is inspired by 1960s melodies and harmonies. Catchy sing along tunes are the order of the day. We have performed across the UK as well as Europe and the States and are based in Milton Keynes. So they sent us the first three singles, we're going to go with Nitroglycerin. So this is Nitroglycerin by Steve Winch and the Inception. I'll see you guys next week.
Yes, sir.